Ion and Ken have been working on some demonstrations for muscle wire, so I'll hand it over to them. Okay, folks. Well, first thing I wanted to do was tell you what is this stuff. We're going to show it. Now, Ion has gone, has built some kits and some other things. He's going to come in and demonstrate uh, one of them here in just a second, but I'll, I'll put this here. This is going to be a little hard to see and we'll have to zoom in on parts of it because of the fact that they're, um, you know, they're very small. Uh, this is a basic experiment book together with the kit which we're going to use here to explain some of these things. All right, so that was the, that was the plug for the book. Um, I recommend this kit. It's a lot of fun. And the whole purpose of it is to build this little guy. And this little guy is a, um, a six-leg walking robot. The so it's a stick, built. like a stick mosquito? Yeah. And he has also built a individual wire demonstration device. This general subject is called shape memory alloys. And shape memory alloys are these metals. As the name says, they're alloys, so they're a combination of two elemental metals usually, although there can be more. And in this particular case, we're going to be demonstrating with a wire, which is often called muscle wire or flex flexanol, and it's, it's commonly known as nitinol, which is a combination of titanium and nickel atoms. Now, can we, can we see what we've got going mm -hmm. here? Okay, so what I has done is he has made a little spring piece out of one wire, and then you can, I don't know if it's going to be visible at all, but right in here there is an extremely thin muscle wire that is stretched across it. there in such a way that when he presses that button it can cause the spring to move and it's being moved by contraction the wire actually shrinks in length when it is heated up then the spring motion pulls the wire back to its original length when he lets go of the button and the wire has a chance to cool down. Now it's not actually the current through the wire that's doing what's, you know, what's going on here. It's the temperature change in the wire. And that temperature change is causing a, an effect that happens way down on the atomic crystal level in this material. Because it was found out that this particular combination of elements, when they are uh, put together, in the right way, will form crystals that have two possible shapes. And those possible shapes, just for those who are interested in sort of the, the technical part of it, are called the martensite shape and the austenite shape. And I'll, you know, I'll do a little hand waving here. So um, a lot of the, there are two different kinds of shapes that the, uh, the atoms can be packed into the crystals in this material. And in one shape, they are like a box. And so you can imagine, you know, all of the atoms lined up on nice square grids. But it's also possible for that box to go over on, a di on the diagonals. And when it is at a certain temperature, it will try as hard as it can to maintain its rigid square shape. But when it is allowed to be cooled down, it can then relax and actually be pulled into an off-axis shape. And so that's happening, again, down at the um, atomic crystal level for this material. Now, these wires are not single crystals. They're made up of little grana of all kinds of little crystals in all kinds of directions. And so as a result, when they change shape, in this case contracting, it can happen in a smooth way, although it can happen very, very fast. If that wire is made in a single crystal, it would jump simultaneously into one form or another. And actually, 
um, Jerry has seen really large single crystals of shape memory alloy material that have the uh, the the um, uh, when they are in their trying to make their square form they actually are like metallic rubber it is the it's crazy I mean you take a bar of this it's about three quarter inch in diameter and it has a little pressure to it and then all of a sudden as you're flexing it just bends and it, then you let go of it, it just boing springs back it's it's amazing I can't wait until this stuff hits the market where we can all play with it you, you never have the you never have in your in your life expect that you're going to find solid metal that behaves like rubber um, it's like where where's the t2000 coming out of you know out of this it's uh, um, uh, very fascinating stuff now I have actually done research on this uh, material down to really really small scale to the point where I've had a project going to make something which is similar to this stick robot that we're seeing here but shrunk down so small that they crawl around as specks inside of a scanning electron microscope. And that's part of why I'm interested in this material is because it's possible then to make motors fabricated down at the nanoscale and then potentially manipulate extraordinarily tiny things. Okay, so uh, Ian showed how one wire was uh, moving back and forth and then he built according to this kit, this walker. So the walker has six legs, and the legs are made out of music wire, so they're springy. There are little tiny muscle wires which are sprung along here so that they can bend the legs, and then the legs will spring back to their kind of, of, of position. And um, we have a battery which we can use to go ahead and make these things move. Okay. Now, with this wire, you do have to be careful because if you heat it up too much, it will lose its memory. And then you have you pretty much have to replace it or, you know, try to go through and refresh its memory. Now, you know, we don't have time this week to go into how all that works, but um, uh, it's we have to be careful not to uh, drive it too much. So I have the ability here to select either three batteries to power it with or four batteries um, to power it with. And I'm going to start off a little conservatively here with, with three and then see how I can um, see what I can get to from there. So we've arranged it in such a way that we can put a, a clip lead for the negative side which then feeds all of the, the wires and then select groups of three to power, once, once on one side and one's on the other. So I'm going to try it just with three, three cells right now. And we can see oh. that how the little, um, the little guy can move. He's moving based on just me hitting one side. And then this is the other side, which takes it in the other direction. So what you would do is you would alternate either manually or with a controller, one side or the other, to get this guy to move around. You can also get a more complicated microprocessor control where you're controlling each leg independently. And if we go up here on the, on the faster part, I'm just going to do this briefly just to show that this stuff can actually operate very, very fast. I'm just going to pulse it. So you can see that the things, if you put more power in them, you're changing the temperature more quickly and they can respond very, very fast. In fact, this material can uh, respond very, very fast, and it is so strong that in certain applications it can be used as non-explosive exploding bolts, where a disk of this material can be made to expand very rapidly, so strong as to pop the head right off of a big bolt, and therefore cause a whole thing to come apart based on an electric signal. So if you see here, it's like this, here is the stiquito itself and then it has like another little piece where you can like do like one set of legs or the other set of legs so it has a little control that's part of it and the, this is the Flexnol brand and it's 0 .004 inches in diameter and then here's all the wiring the aluminum for crimping the steel music wire and you just put it together and it's even got a clip for a 9 volt battery to run it through and run the whole thing and sandpaper because titanium it oxidizes and then that oxidized titanium is not conductive 
So we have to sand away the uh, oxidized portion.